Um, so if you've got removable brake mounts, there's a couple different kinds. The Fit and S and M ones, basically you've got this little mount that sits right there. Your arm would slide over that, and then this bolt runs all the way through into the frame, and that's what holds it in there. There's some where the actual mount itself would have threads down here, and it would thread into your frame, uh, but mine's a fit, so it doesn't have that. It's got this kind. So what you want to do first is get some grease on these little mounts. So keep your brakes from creaking as bad. You'll be able to spring out easier. You won't have to run your springs really, really tight, which isn't good to do anyway. And I'm going to slide it, and the grease will also hold it inside of your brake caliper. Like that. It's not going to fall out. And then just, I usually just stick the bolt in through the top. Like that. Turn the mount so it's kind of facing the direction it's going to be when you put it on. And then just take the whole assembly there, set it on there, and then thread the bolt tight. So, just a GoPro a little bit more. Start threading that in there by hand. Make sure your cap stays where it's supposed to. Sometimes those little spring caps will try to move around on you. So, just be wary of that. And then you don't want to get these all the way tight yet, but you just get it on there so it's just kind of tight. There we go. And now I'll do the same for the other side. I hate doing brakes. I don't know about you guys, but brakes are like the least fun part to do. I don't know why. They just suck. And then sometimes it's a good idea to have some of that Loctite stuff on the bolt. And then make sure you're putting the arms on in the right order because one sits lower than the other so they can cross over each other. For your brake caliper, brake calipers, excuse me, I can't talk. Um, now the side with your chain on it is going to be tricky sometimes to reach with the Allen key. So you'll just have to make small turns sometimes if it won't thread in by hand. Mine is actually threading in by hand. Yay! So I can get that pretty far by hand and now I'm just going to have to make small turns because the chain and everything is in the way. Now you can get little uh, socket uh, wrench Allen keys. Those will make your life a lot easier if you get them. I have a set but they're God knows where, so this will take an extra few seconds since it went in pretty easily there. But yeah, those things are pretty great. The only problem with those is it's really easy to over tighten stuff sometimes. Alright, so we've got those just kind of sitting on there. Next thing I'm going to do is put my brake lever on. Hopefully it's either a 5 or a 6 mil. And it is a 5, so... I'm going to turn the bike upright now. I'm going to set it up somewhere like that maybe. Yeah, that'll work. And now, you're pretty much always going to use your brake lever on the right hand side. There really aren't any brake levers that you can, that are really made for using on the left hand side. Even though you can just flip them upside down and whatever, but the standard position for a brake lever this is the right hand side. Now this bolt, or this brake lever, excuse me, is uh, one bolt holds everything together. So this is kind of weird. Normally you'll have one bolt that is a hinge for the lever handle and one bolt that actually does the hinging. So I get it to about where I want it, right there. I'm going to tighten it down. My bike's moving around on me. And you want to press it up against your grip so your grip won't move on you. And then, of course, if your hand is on your grip, it'll be easy to get to your brake lever. And it's really easy to snap these bolts, so be careful not to over-tighten them. 
The other thing is if you leave them a little bit loose, say you were to wreck really hard and smash that lever, instead of the lever, the lever will move around instead of potentially snapping your hinge on the back. So I never crank them down super tight. You want them tight enough that they're not going to move when you're trying to use them, but you don't need to manhandle them and over torque them like crazy. So next thing we need is my brake cable. Now I don't know what length. This is a brand new brake cable, so it's going to have the housing's going to have to be cut to length, which is really easy to do. So I'm just going to uh, darn it! I got to take the actual cable out of that housing. And to do that, I have to cut. These cutters really suck, so this might take me a minute. Oh, hey, that almost worked perfect. Make sure you cut the right end off, guys. Just, just forewarning you, make sure you cut the right end off, otherwise you'll have to go buy another cable. You want the end that's shaped like a little wheel. You don't want the end of the ball. Alright, so what you do to make sure you get your cable to the right length, slide your cable in like that and it'll just kind of hold itself in there and figure out about where your brake mount is. Mine, I didn't put mine on, I forgot to do it. But my cable mount is supposed to be right here where my thumb's at. So I want enough length to be able to turn my bars 360 degrees before my cable binds up. So I'm thinking about right there. That's plenty of length. So I'm going to mark where I need to cut it with my thumb and just hold that spot. I'm going to take my cutters again. Bam. Throw the other end over there somewhere. And now we've got that. Now one thing you can do Take the smallest Allen key you have and jam that into the end you just cut of your cable. And just kind of work it in there and spread the end of that cable open again because when you cut it you're going to pinch the end of it. See that's a nice open hole. If you do that with the Allen key, this Allen key is a little bit too big to do it with actually, but if you do that, your cable won't get caught right on the end of that housing. So now, I'm going to slide my cable back inside. Be very careful not to fray the end of the cable. That's not going to be fun. You'll have to cut it a bunch of times and that's just no good. So, if it would go back in. There we go. Should slide in real nice for you. Some people will grease these cables, but the Odyssey Slick cables I'm pretty sure are greased already for you. So you don't have to worry about it. If you got a slit cable at least. So now what I've got, there's little slits in the barrel adjuster on these levers. And there's a slit in the lever right in the front of it. Hopefully you can kind of see the slits right there. Get those all the slits to line up. And then take the ball of that cable, or the little brown, whatever that is, cylinder thing, and slide the cable through all those gaps and then thread this barrel adjuster all the way in that will keep your cable locked in there slide your cable housing all the way into that barrel adjuster and then pull your cable all the way around and now me being the genius I am forgot to uh, put my other cable or the other brake mount on, so I'm going to flip the bike back over again, and I guess I can leave it flipped since I've got all the lever and cable stuff done, but my cable wants to be done. Um, where is it? There it is. There's my little cable mount thing, and then these use an ungodly small Allen key to hold them tight. And sometimes they do come loose on you. That's not good, but it happens because the Allen keys they use are so small. There we go. That's the right one. Well, there's one hole that's threaded and one hole that's not. But honestly, I can't remember which one's which. So if the bolt threads in, I got the right hole.
the bolt doesn't thread in, we got the wrong hole. And that's the wrong hole. Okay. Is this the right hole? And then on the bottom of that mount, there's a stud. And obviously there's a spot where the bolt goes in. The stud's what's going to hold it straight. And then obviously the bolt is what holds it down. So just make sure it's tight. Don't over tighten it because it's really easy to strip those out. And if you strip that out, this mount is going to be really, really fun to take off later. So there's that. Next thing you need is your barrel adjuster. And then your barrel adjuster should have a lock nut on it. Make sure yours has one. If it doesn't, go find one. Find a new barrel adjuster. Pull one off your sister's next. I don't care. Get yourself a barrel adjuster with a lock nut on it. Thread it all the way in. Now take your cable. I can reach it. Take the end of this cable, slide that inside of the barrel adjuster, pull it all the way through. I'm getting caught on stuff. Damn it. I looped around my bars. That's awesome. Okay. Now make sure it doesn't get stuck under your grips. Now pull it tight. Make sure it is sitting inside your brake cable or your brake lever. It wasn't, so good thing I checked. Make sure everything is seated where it should be, and I just realized I forgot something. There is a very important part that's often overlooked. I overlooked it myself. It's this little tiny silver cap thing. This slides over the end of your cable and prevents your cable from getting yanked inside of this barrel adjuster, and that can happen from repeated use of your brakes, which is normal. So if you slide this little guy on there, you don't have to crimp it on. The other end of your cable will have one of these guys like crimped onto it. This, you don't have to crimp it, just slide it over there. That's good enough, it'll stay in there. And then, now, put the cable back in. And we're all good. Try to double check everything since we just had it all back out. And having that piece there will also make it easier to turn your barrel adjuster. So. And if you want, you could even put a little bit of grease on the end of that. That'll make it even easier to turn your barrel adjuster, but I'm not worried about it. So, next thing we want to do is put our brake pads on. We don't want the hanger cable yet. Put our brake pads on. So, I've got two different sides. This side, I like to have it so the bigger side is facing up. I think that makes brake pads grab a little bit harder. So I'm going to go ahead and thread off some of the hardware. Basically what you've got on the inside, there's these little pivoter things that look like this. you got a round face and then you get this, or this like caved in one and you get this round thing. Those sit in there and they allow you to adjust the angle of your brake pad. And there's one on each side there's going to be one on each side of your brake calipers so make sure you don't lose these and there's a little washer in there too those are very very important if you're missing one you're not going to be able to adjust your brake pads right you're gonna your brakes are going to suck and um, they're going to wear brake pads unevenly and that's not fun so for now just get them on there so they're not going to fall off just finger tighten them for now maybe a little bit less than finger tight just so it's staying on there let's go around to the other side and put this one on and by the way guys clear brake pads on chrome rims make a lot of noise I kinda regret getting clear pads for it but oh well I just have to deal with it now so that one's on let's go back to this side so now the pads are on there and usually what I'll do is I'll kind of sit them about right just kind of guide it with your hand and hold it like that hold these two things with your thumb like that your thumb and your pointer finger just hold it tight get the brake pad to be sitting flat on the rim 
And then some people say you should tow them. It just depends on how much grab you want to have. If you want instant grab on your brakes, set them flat. If you want tow, or if you want like a, a, an adjustable or a gradual brake, give them a tow, which means to angle them. You're basically, that means to stance, stance nation on your brake pads. Put some camber on those things. But I'm not about that stance life, so. I just want them nice and flat. Now, you want your 5 mil wrench or whatever your brake pads use. Just tighten them a little bit because it's going to turn like that, which is really annoying. And basically, that's why you only tighten a little bit. Set your Allen key down. You can actually grab it by hand and rotate it and then go tighten it some more. But right now, we're just trying to get them to where they want to be. They don't have to be all the way tight yet, but you want to get them sitting nice and kind of adjusted to where you want them. There you go. So we've got them sitting right at least. I'm loosen this bolt up a little bit. And now you'll notice the springs on our brake calipers are still loose. Um, that's a good thing. Now that we've got the brake pads adjusted right, what you want to do next is put your cable hanger on. So the cable hanger has a washer that needs to go on the bottom of this hole. See there's a hole that the cable goes through, washer, the actual hanger itself, another washer, and then the nut that holds it down. And I have a wrench, I think one, if you get, this is just a basic hanger, one of these, you can use a 10 mil, it's this one. So, what you want to do is just slide the cable through the hole. It's kind of tricky sometimes. I like to have the hole on the back side of the hanger. A lot of times these things, the hole will be on this side. That's why there's a gap in the hanger. But if you just flip it, take the bolt out, flip it, and put it on the back side, it's so much easier to try to get through. So, now what we want to do is just take that and slide it on there. Get it finger tight. Don't use your wrench yet. Like that. Just so it'll sit there and not slide off. Now take your, uh, your what is this called, a straddle cable, that's what this is called. Mine, I've already got set up to the length that I need. Um, you can adjust these, because mine, you'll notice, both sides are the same. Some of these kinds of brakes will have um, basically bolts like what this cable hanger has on them, and you'll use this one round socket end, loop it in one side, and then just run the cable through your arm, tighten it. Mine, you can't do that, but you can still adjust these cables if you get, um, they call them NARPs, I think, which is basically what this guy right here is. Some brakes will come with these, some will not. You'll have to go buy them separate. Odyssey makes them. They're called Odyssey NARPs. Um, basically, it's got a bolt that runs into it, and it's got a hole that your cable runs through, and it takes the place of these things. So you can cut your cable, figure out what length cable you need, slide this thing on to where you need it at, Tighten the bolt in there, cut your cable, and you got it the right length. So you can adjust um, everything. That would, and then this also works if you got a, an Odyssey Quick Slick, which some people say are not adjustable. They are. Um, you can use these things right here to change the length of the cable. You can cut the ends off of them, slide some NARPs on there, and boom, your cable is adjustable now. But mine's already set right. And one quick tip for you guys. Um, if you always, if you don't have any cable ends, we don't want to fray the end of your cable. Some old spoke nipples, pinch those things onto the end of your cable. It looks a lot cleaner than having a bunch of frays, so that'll save you a bunch of stress, trouble. And yeah, so just stick this thing. Since I've already got mine the right size, I'm just gonna slide it in there. That one kind of hooks in there, kind of hard, so it's a trick sometimes. But that's in. Now what you want to do, double check, make sure your cable is sitting in all the right spots, which it is. Take your cable hanger and loop it into that straddle cable and hold it. Hold it back, pull it back, make sure your brake pads are always touching your rim, and pull your cable tight. Don't pull it too tight, but just pull it about like how I've got it. And now take your wrench, see does it work on this one? 
and start to tighten your cable hanger as much as you can by holding that hanger by hand. Once you get it tight enough, you won't have to pull the hanger back anymore. I'll be able to get this pretty tight by hand. Now that's about as tight as I can get it by hand. It looks like two tens would work. But what I'm going to do is take my crescent wrench, my adjustable wrench, whatever you want to call it, put that on the bottom nut or the bottom bolt, and then use the ten on the nut on top. Get it nice and tight so it won't slip on me. This is the best way to get your cable almost the or your brakes almost the perfect tension the first time. Leave these springs loose. Um, get this thing to the right length first and then slide your hanger on. Pull it all the way back. Get these arms to touch your pad or the pads to touch your rim. Pull them back that far that the arms are touching with your springs loose. Hold it back. Pull the cable out tight. Let go of the cable. Start tightening the nut. That way you'll have just the right amount of tension, or just the right amount of uh, tightness on your cable uh, when you tighten your springs up, which is the next step. Um, I'm not sure what size wrench these little things use, but I always just use the adjustable wrench on them. And usually I try to adjust the springs so that these uh, little things will sit almost, so that the flat sides on them sit almost parallel with each other usually a little bit more. I'll try to get the camera in there and show you a little bit more. And then you hold it in place because this thing right here is what tightens your spring. The bolt clamps everything down so it can't move. And then I'm just going to adjust that a little bit. If you look at it there, I've got it just turned to the right a little bit. Otherwise it would be perfectly flat. But I got it turned to the right just a little bit. It's usually where I like them. Um, that'll keep the because you don't want the springs too hard and you can actually bend your springs and damage them if you over tighten those things too much. So I'm going to come to the other side and just get it this I don't know what this thing is even called but get it facing about the same angle as the other side. About like that. I think it needs to be a little bit tighter so I'm going to loosen that bolt. I'm going to adjust it a little bit more. There we go. get those nice and tight and now you can give your brakes a test so I'm just gonna pull oh I almost fell over and if you can see that I've got almost the perfect amount of tension on the uh, brake cable but my brake calipers are not adjusted quite right that could be either my rim not being centered which it is or um, one thing you can do if you get a brand new straddle cable sometimes you can just take grab your arm and rotate your straddle cable around that didn't change it at all so what I'm gonna do before I go and adjust the springs uh, you wanna make sure your wheel is centered perfectly and then the next thing you wanna do is make sure your pads are all the way tight which mine are not yet so I'm going to get my brake pads adjusted the rest of the way. Now that I got my uh, cable and the brakes are actually put together, hold the brake lever down. That'll pinch those brake pads nice and tight for you. Loosen that up and then just kind of play with the positioning on it a little bit. Get it about where you want it. And then do that. And then there is a trick that I'm going to show you guys to getting your brakes. So I'm gonna I almost forgot about this. Go grab a hose clamp. Take this hose clamp. And this one might not be quite big enough. We'll see. Loosen it all the way. We'll see if this will work. Um this hose clamp. Yep it will reach I think. Take your hose clamp a big enough one and thread that hose clamp over your brake lever and it will work it will hold your brake lever tight for you and then you can come back here and you see that's still kinda loose adjust your brake pad a little bit more and I've got one of these are called keyed hose clamps you can just continue to tighten that hose clamp down 
pull your brakes tighter and tighter. So, and you want to do this for each side. So we've got that holding nice and tight. And now what you can do is take your hand and actually hold that brake pad from rotating since that hose clamp is holding the lever for you. So you can just take your finger, keep that brake pad from turning on you. And it's working pretty good for me there. And bam, that is perfect. So now we can come back here, loosen the hose clamp up, and then jump to the other side, get it adjusted to our liking, and then come back over here and tighten the hose clamp back up again. This is a trick, I've been doing this forever, and it works perfect. Um, it saves you from having to have, it basically gives you a second person almost, same type of deal. Normally you would have a person go up and hold that brake lever for you, but I'm by myself right now, so I can't do that. So I was like, well, what am I going to do? And I was trying to think of something that would work, that was cheap, to hold that thing in place. So I got my brake pad adjusted right. So I'm going to go over here, tighten this hose clamp back down again, and it will scratch up your lever. Just so you know, you could put something under it probably to keep it from doing that, but I don't really care. So it's a brand new lever, but it's going to get scratched up anyway. So now you can go ahead and start tightening down this nut. That's tight. So our brakes are fully adjusted now. We can go ahead and take this hose clamp all the way off. And it's going to take a second. We'll see just how bad it scratched that lever. I don't think it even scratched it that bad. But like I said, if you get one of these keyed hose clamps for like five bucks from O'Reilly or AutoZone, they work wonders, and you can hardly tell it scratch that. So there we go. We've got that all taken care of. Now we need to adjust our brakes some more. It feels, the cable feels really loose. So we need these two wrenches I'm going to do to adjust it is the side that is touching the rim, obviously we need to tighten the spring up on it, so loosen that up, and we're going to tighten her down. That might have been too tight, we'll find out. And it looks like something is wrong with my caliper. Because when I started to loosen this bolt, it sprung back out, which is really weird. So we might have a problem here. It feels all right, though. I'm not sure what's wrong here. I'll go ahead and double check. Something might be wrong with my caliper. Or it's possible that my spring isn't in all the right the right way or something. We'll find out, I guess. But I turn that, get it tight. See that spring should be plenty tight like that. We'll see what happens. Goes in and it's springing out a little bit, and it looks like something is interfering with it a little bit. I'm not really sure what. I'm going to have to go and look into this and see exactly what's wrong, but it looks like I do have them adjusted the right way. It's just that one side's getting hung up on something, so I'm going to have to pull the brake caliper back out. But pretend that's working right. I'm going to go ahead and cut my cable now that we've got it all adjusted. Hopefully that cut all the way through, and of course it didn't. There's one strand left. And it snapped off. Hey! Alright, take that, throw it somewhere. We don't need it. Um, next thing 
take your cable and or spoke nipple, whatever you're going to use, slide it over the cable and you can just use your cable cutters to pinch it down or cut it off. Hey, that actually worked pretty nice. Now we have less stuff there. That'll keep it from fraying and there's not a big thing hanging there. Maybe I'll try to cut the other one. No, I don't want to do that to this one. It'll make it sharp. You can do it to this one. Wouldn't do it to this just in case my leg catches it. I will push that in though. Man, that's annoying though. That one side isn't working. It is possible that the spring I didn't put back in right or something. And it might be hanging up on something somewhere in there. I'm going to take it out, look at it, put it back on, see what's going on. But at least now I've got my cables all adjusted right. And the brakes are done, except for that one issue. Um, now, if your cable's too loose, you can back this barrel adjuster out. That'll tighten your brakes up. You can thread it back in to loosen it. So if you're worried about making your brakes too tight, you might want to start putting your cable in with the barrel adjuster backed out a little bit so that you can thread it back in and loosen it. But I feel like I've got my brakes exactly where I want them. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, so now, I've only got a couple things left to do and this whole bike is done. We've already double checked a few things. We've double checked the wheels, the cranks, pedals, the seats taken care of. So now you want to find some way to strap your uh, cable down. I've got this Sabrosa cable tie that I'm going to use. So what you do with these is you just wrap it around your top tube, pull it through, get it nice and tight and then it's velcro so it just wraps around nice and tight and that'll hold your cable down just like that and then you can use electrical tape hose clamps zip ties are usually people's favorite thing to use you can use just about anything to um, do that with but you definitely want to you don't want that cable flying all over the place so next thing we're gonna do is get our bars adjusted and then this whole thing will be done um, so now one thing you might want to have checked is your tire pressure but I already got that so now we're going to come up here to the front of the bike and loosen all these stem bolts up it doesn't really much order you loosen them since they're all not really that tight anyway and then I'm going to tighten it up a little bit so they're not quite as free there we go now stand on the side of your bike and figure out about where you want them. Sometimes it helps to sit on your bike. I know exactly where I had them before. So I'm going to put them about right there. If they would stay. Yeah, right there looks good. So I'm going to just tighten two of the bolts. The one on top and one on the bottom. Just to hold them down. If I could get the Allen key in there. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to check the gap on the top and the bottom of the stem. You want to make sure that the gap on the top and bottom of your stem is even. If it's uneven, you risk cracking this face plate and damaging it. And it actually is a little bit uneven. So I'm going to loosen the top. The bottom has a little bit bigger of a gap. And tighten the bottom a little bit. Now we're looking even. So now that I've got the bars where I want, we're just going to start tightening the stem bolts. You can go in a cross pattern. That's usually what I do. And I can't ever remember the pattern. So you'll want to start with, let's say, top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left, top left, and just keep repeating that pattern. That'll keep you from tightening it unevenly. Just keep going around in a circle until they're all nice and tight. Alright, that should be good enough. Now you want to get your bars centered up. I'm going to adjust the GoPro a little bit. So what I usually do, stand on top of your bike like this and then 
actually when I grab since I have different size use a different size allen key on my fork bolt than on my uh, stem bolts I gotta be careful here so first thing I want to do is actually tighten my headset up so you wanna oh, hold that with your leg and then tighten this top bolt up don't get it too tight about right there and then pick it up try to spin it it spins pretty freely but not super free because it is going to loosen up a little bit and compress a little bit after you ride it so you want to get a little bit extra tight um, when you initially put it together now that the headset's taken care of stay on top of your bike like this with your feet on either side of the tire grab the end of your bars and then just twist your stem get it so that the stem is lined up with your tire and this is usually how I do it and once you've got it start tightening these side bolts so that one's started before I leave the front end here I'm gonna get the other one started just to make sure everything is at least kinda clamped down And now you've got them started tight. Double check it, stand back, look at it, looks good. And start cranking them down. You just go back and forth between the two. Tighten one, tighten the other, tighten the other. Until both of them feel nice and tight. And this Allen wrench does not want to fit in there. And there you go. Um, yeah, guys, that's everything. Um, at this point, I would go through and triple check every bolt, nut, everything that could possibly come loose on your bike. But basically, the whole bike's put together. I think that maybe took an hour. It's really easy to put a BMX bike together. Do a quick drop test. I had a video on that already. I don't know if I'm going to upload that before this one or not. But do a drop test. You'll notice passes with flying colors doesn't make any rattling shaking whatever noises sounds perfect which means this bike is ready to go like i said just triple check everything even though we've double checked you want to triple check you don't want anything coming loose on you and then um i would strongly recommend carrying your six mil and your eight mil for your cranks yeah whatever your stem and bars use and whatever your cranks use with you whatever tool it is on your first ride because those are very likely to come loose as well as your back wheel so if you can carry a wrench with you for your back wheel bring that but other than that guys um, this takes care of everything I hope you guys have found this video helpful and uh, if you want to see more of this bike stuff I know this is kind of based around like a car channel but if you want to see more bike stuff more bike tutorials um, if you want me to go into more depth on a specific part on this bike I've been fixing bikes since I was in the seventh grade, so I've had a lot of experience behind me, uh, all kinds of different bikes. So if there's something you guys want to see, or if maybe you guys want to see some riding videos, I'm not any good, but I'll do riding videos, maybe do some stuff with the chest strap like I'm using right now. Anything you guys want to see, let me know in the comments below, and um, I'll see you guys later.